Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, brothers and sisters. It's Roshan Mohammed Sali here, the editor of Five Pillars. And we're here in Manchester outside Birchfields Primary School in Longside, Manchester. And we're here because around 100 parents or more are about to demonstrate against sex education, relationships and sex education teaching currently taking place in this primary school. Uh, the parents are currently gathering. There will be more people coming soon for the demonstration. Um, they're absolutely furious and they're furious because they feel or they, they know that explicit sex education videos have been shown to very young children. I'm talking about children from the ages of, I don't know, six, seven, eight years old. One such video was the Willa video. And you can find that on YouTube, brothers and sisters. Just Google Willa's story. And that video is basically about a seven-year-old boy, in inverted commas, who transitioned into a girl, in inverted commas. And their parents were okay with it, and everyone was okay with it, and everything's hunky-dory because at seven years old, you can just, from a boy, you can turn into a girl, apparently, according to the teachers at this school. Now, videos such as that have been shown to very young children. There's been many other incidents whatsoever. It's led to the parents getting really upset uh, trying to engage with the school. They say the school has not engaged with them whatsoever. They've basically taken their kids off school three times two weeks ago. They took hundreds of children off school. This school has around an intake of around 700 pupils. Half of them were taken off school three times two weeks ago in protest at the explicit sex education content being taught at this school. Now, Last week, there was another strike, a one-day strike before that. Maybe I'm getting a bit, up, a bit mixed up. It may have been the week before that. But there was another one-day strike. Today, it's escalated into a full-scale protest by parents outside the school, which is about to happen. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Who's kids? Our kids! Villa was everywhere. Villa was in year one. Villa was in year two. Villa was in year four, five, six. Villa was everywhere. Did the school tell us? No. Who told us? Our own kids. Is it our kids' job to inform us what they're being taught at school? No. There's no smoke without fire. Villa was everywhere. Aisha, your kids were told that if everyone else died and there was only women, it's okay to marry a woman. This is not under respect and tolerance. We agree the nine characteristics should be protected. All nine characteristics should be protected. But is this to teach respect and tolerance? No. Was that statement teaching respect and tolerance? No. And now, if the school wanted to abase these rumors, how do you get rid of rumors? Open, honest clarity. Show us the content, show us the material, have the discussion with us. Yes, there's plenty of confusion. You could get rid of that confusion in a matter of instance by having a meeting with the parents, which is what we've asked for. Now let's talk about the real issue here. The real issue is the material and the content that's being shown to our kids. We've got all the complaints documented. A child said to his teacher, my mom's gonna have a baby boy. The teacher said to the child, you don't know what that baby is, it'll decide its gender when it grows up. If that's your opinion, is this teaching respect and tolerance? We agree protecting the nine characteristics. We agree that you should respect everyone, that we should be tolerant towards people who have different views to ourselves. But is this comment teaching respect and tolerance? No. And do you know what one of the characteristics that's supposed to be protected is? Religious beliefs and values as well. They stood there laughing, it's a joke to them. Our children's education, our children's safeguarding, our children's protection is a joke to them. They deem me an aggressor and an intimidator. These are their words. I assure you I'm not. Who's had to reply to their complaint? No one! We handed in 120 complaints last year. Not a single reply. Sex education. Do you remember that was on the chapter? Lies, 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 lies. 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 Lies
education. Lies. Lies. By Lies. the way, you were all invited to our meeting that you cancelled the Pakistani community centre. You're more than welcome to come stand here and listen to parents. But we know you don't want to listen to parents. So you can tell us you got rid of the villa video all you want. The point is, there's legitimate issues now of how you're picking and choosing your curriculum. Can any teacher just go on YouTube and pick whatever video she wants and show it to our kids? No. no. Is that an acceptable method of teaching? No. Is that an acceptable method of getting your sources of education? No. So now we have to, as parents, become part of the vetting process. We have to become part of that dialogue. You have to be open and honest with us now. We have lost trust. Have you tried to gain back our trust? No. Over a month we've been talking. One day strike, three day strike. Protest now outside school. They still, they still do not want to engage with parents. I'll tell you for free. They're waiting for summer holidays. Now I'm asking you guys, I'll be honest with you, I did not expect the support that all the parents have given. God bless you all. The amount of support that you guys have given. What I'm asking is if this is not resolved this year, please, come September, do not forget where we finished in July. Do not forget the issues that we have. Until parents are made part of that process of having a look at the material, deciding the age appropriateness of the material, reviewing the material, not just in RSE. All curriculum, all material across all curriculum, that there can be a legitimate concern of age appropriateness, sensitivity, and safeguarding. Please tell me a single homophobic comment that's been made by anyone. We have only ever said one simple thing. Age appropriation. My child was six years old when she watched that Willow video. We're asking you now, while you stood inside school, come outside and speak to the parents. Hands up if you think they're going to come. No. I promise you, we have taken every step very carefully. We don't want to keep your kids off school. We know what burden it is for you guys to even be here for an hour and a half. We wanted to do a full day protest. Everyone here is a parent. Everyone here has kids to provide for. Everyone here has jobs. Everyone here has responsibilities. We care about that. They don't. Our religion it should, be, it should be taken into consideration. As a community, we should be taken into consideration. We have been living um, side by side with the gay community. We have, we have the a gay, gay capital, as they call it, Canal Street, you know, in the city centre. We, we've been living side by side. We work together. There's never been any issues with, you know, the LGBT community. The concerns are with the safeguarding and inappropriateness and the age-appropriate content that we're, we're seeing is being pushed down the throats of our children. And it's not even remaining in the PSHSE or the RE um, subjects. It's been, it's been spread across the board. You know, it's going into art, it's going into math. I don't understand for the life of me why it's it's going down this route. We totally understand the government has advised that you need to obviously um, teach these topics, but it's obviously to the discretion of the school when it comes to a primary school. And for us as parents, we have some serious safeguarding concerns here. Um, you know, the, the worst thing of it all is we're not being, there's no dialogue with the school. The teachers are absolutely just ignoring us as if we don't exist. It's our children that are going to the school. A lot of these parents that are here, excuse myself, have been students in this school. We've all grown up in this area, in this school, and we're, it's so sad to see that they, they just don't communicate with us. We've sent letters, we've sent emails, we've done everything possible. And instead, when we're having a, a casual conversation with a teacher, you'll know from several parents, the teachers have this attitude where they don't want to listen to what you're saying, and then they'll turn it into, oh, you're being aggressive, you're threatening, when there's nothing like that happening. There's, there's, there's children around us when we're having the conversation. No one is behaving in that manner, but it's an easy way of them getting out of the conversation and turning their back on what we're saying. We never wanted to come out here and protest uh, uh, with the school. All we've asked for is a sit down, and as per the government guidelines, the school shows us 
what uh, content they're going to be teaching our children and have some dialogue and communication. We understand that these topics have to be taught, but as parents, we should know what our children are going to be learning. And primary concerns are, we're a number two rated by Ofsted. Our children should be taught maths, English, and improving on their literacy, their, their, their education aspects of it with science and everything, so we can excel in future. We understand you want to teach these topics, but I don't understand the whole aspect of shoving it down our throat and just, it's, it's, it's very saddening that we're having to go through all this and um, yeah, we're just disappointed with the school and, and the approach that they've taken with it, with, with getting the council involved and the councillors and everything. We've, we've, we've fallen on deaf ears and, and it's led to this now where we have no choice. We need to safeguard our children at the end of the day. This is point 14 on the RSC document. There are many excellent examples in which you can establish